2015 Oxford Dictionary, folklore is traditional beliefs, customs, and stories passed down from generation to generation through storytelling. Um, one example of folklore found in North America is the, which some of you may or may not be familiar with, is the um, Algonquin Wendigo legends. One of my favorite bits of folklore is that of the Pukas from from Ireland. So, today I'd like to share with you what Pukas are, a custom and a superstition associated with them, and some depictions of them in more modern popular culture. Uh, so, to begin with, an idea of what Pukas are. The general definition is, of pukas is that it is that of fairy of fairy creatures found primarily in Irish folklore. According to the Irish author W. B. Yeats in his 1888 book entitled *Fairy and Folk Tales of the Irish Peasantry*, pukas are said to be shapeshifters uh. capable of assuming multiple forms, including but not limited to those of horses. Rabbits, goats, and even more chimera like mishmashes of whatever they mix and choose. Because why not? <laughs> right. um, Pukas were considered to be unpredictable tricksters, capable of either helping or hindering the humans that shared their um, environment in, entirely on a whim. Uh, there are stories of them helping humans by assisting in farm work, and they were also, in the hindering side of it, they were also known to lead travelers astray, not necessarily to harm them, but just as a joke. It was funny. Um, however, unlike most of the other fairy creatures in Irish folklore, pukas were generally regarded more with respect than with outright fear, um, as something a bit more mysterious instead of something purely dangerous. So, now that I've been prepared with a bit of what they are, I'd like to share a couple ways of how they might be dealt with, let's say. Um, according to Patricia Monaghan, the author of the 2004 Encyclopedia of Health and folklore. In keeping with the general view of fairies, there are multiple customs and superstitions connected with the Pukas. One of these superstitions revolves around the picking of wild black bears. Huh. After October 31st, any wild black bears still left on the vine were considered to be the were considered to belong to the Pukas, and picking them was remarkably bad luck. You know, stealing. Don't steal the Pukas. Another, a custom associated with the Pukas revolved around the harvest. Um, in some locations of Ireland, a small stand of the crops was left unharvested in the fields. This was regarded as the Puka's share of the crops, and was, let's say, a precautionary measure to keep the Puka's from pestering the farmers. Finally, let's talk about, about I would like to talk about depictions of Puka's in more modern world and popular culture. Like many other folklore creatures, pukas are featured in multiple modern works of popular culture. In both the movie and the play, I think Harvey, the main character of Elwood Dowd has a supposedly huh. imaginary friend by the name Harvey, who is a six foot tall invisible rabbit that Elwood, in, in, the, in the movie and the play, refers to as a puka. 
Uh, all right, then. Um, then let's see. A Luca is also a reoccurring character in the October Day novel series by Shannon McGuire. This Luca in the story is a keeper of a supernatural library that houses all the information on um, the histories of the various fairy races featured in the series. Unlike most other renditions of Pukas, she doesn't display the more trickster-like qualities, but she still is, still has the shape shift, the traditional shape shifting capabilities. A Puka is also a main character in the novel Tamsin by Peter S. Beagle. Spooka is an ally of the main character. However, throughout the story, he also displays the traditional trickster tendencies and shapeshifter capabilities. So then, in conclusion, having discussed what Spookas are, how they may be dealt with, and some depictions of them in popular culture, I hope that maybe by sharing this, if you ever cross paths with a puka, be it in a book mm. or a movie, you two may be able to recognize it. How many uh, how many books are in that series? Do you know? Oh. That the, the series of the. Uh, which one? Is, this Sh is it Sh Shannon? Yeah, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce her name. Right Have now. you read them? Yes, I was advised it was Shannon, so. Oh, Shannon, good. And it's, you like them? Oh, very much so. I have, I have all the print. Uh -huh. She's got short stories online. I'm a big fan of the, of the fantasy, and I also okay. enjoy an audiobook. I just wonder okay. if that would maybe be something Amanda yes. should get into sometimes. I, I do recommend. They're good. But I think there are nine so far. Yeah, it looked like there was a lot. Like, oh, There's man, I'm going back. We'll just keep up with the tons. And some of them, some of them more dominant. I wish I was just really like, what happens here? Yeah. Okay. I will go. Oh yeah. Are you ready? Okay.